Hello everyone and welcome to Subnautica. Today I wanted to talk about a method of navigation, method used in navigation that is called triangulation. And uh, the reason why we are in Subnautica doing this is pretty simple. Actually, Subnautica does not feature a map. So you're kind of blind when you want to go out and explore or you don't really have um, much of, a, of an idea where to go and what you could actually look for. Obviously the game gives you some indication as the story developed by giving you um, beacons that will light up and give you some interesting location to go and explore. But it does not give you a map and also something that I've learned is that your visibility uh, in Subnautica is somewhat limited. I'll talk about that a little bit later. And the only object that you can actually see while standing on your uh, <laughs> escape pod is the wreck of the Aurora, nothing else, even even though you actually should be seeing things here. So, so this is quite interesting. But I wanted to talk about triangulation and how you can use this method uh, that is a, you know, a very ancient method of uh, determining distances. Uh, in real world as well, that was used as far back as in ancient Egypt. So, so yes, so this will work in game as well. And um, as you might have guessed, triangulation is a method that is based on drawing triangles to determine um, either some, either your position uh, with regards to something else, uh, or uh, determining how far away something is from the point where you're standing and um, there can be quite a lot of theory involved in doing all that but we will focus on the simplest possible approach that is also very easy to implement whether you are, whether you are out in the wild using your uh, compass or here in game uh, it doesn't actually matter it will work pretty simple the only thing that you will need to do is get um, measure the angles actually at which you will be uh, looking at different objects and um, here in Subnautica we have the uh, advantage of not only knowing what the angles are but also uh, we know the distance towards any any beacon that we are looking at as you can see here uh, this beacon is 523 meters away uh, some some other beacon from lifeboat 17 is 548 meters away some is over one kilometer away. So normally uh, you obviously don't know what the distance is to the point that you you would like to, for example, um, uh, know the coordinates of. Uh, so you would be measuring angles only from two different points. But here we, we also know the distance. So, so we don't really need two measurements because we will know the angle and the distance, but we can actually narrow down uh, the, those positions by um, adding those distances as well because well the um, angle measurement here in the game is somewhat approximate because you know we, we don't actually know what the precise angle is as we'll have to guesstimate that uh, the one tick on the compass I, I've calculated that is uh, seven and a half degrees so well I suppose will be maybe one degree accurate maybe a little bit less than that um, so yeah, so what we'll do is we'll try to, uh, first of all, map all those positions of all different life pods with regards to our escape pod and see how they are spaced on, well, the area that we are exploring. Um, also, another thing that I would like to show you later on is how you can determine the distance of things that you are seeing out there in the horizon uh, using triangulation. For that you need two measurements and Aurora seems to be a very good example uh, or very good test subject. Uh, what we will be able to do using this method is not only measure how large the Aurora is without actually going there <laughs> and um, how far away it is. and. Um, I've already tested that, I pre-tested that, and um, I was quite surprised by the results. So, without further ado, let's do this! 
So as the first thing, we will probably measure all the um, angles and distances for all the uh, life pods that we already have discovered. And first one is life pod 3, uh, 523 meters away, as you know, uh, as you can see on the screen. And um, it's about 7 degrees northwest, uh, counting counterclockwise. So we'll put that on our map that I've put uh, in... Uh, and here on the coral draw you can actually do this on a sheet of paper as well um, it's just simpler using um, for me to record using a, a software another life pod 17 is for 548 meters away uh, almost directly west so we'll subtract on again uh, around seven degrees I think direction north from uh, directly west we'll put that on our map as well then we have life pod 19, um, direction southwest, uh, and I think we'll need to subtract maybe maybe three degrees from that. Uh, 1167 meters, and then we have Aurora Rendezvous Point on the island that we've already discovered. It's um, 1226 meters away, uh, direction southwest seven and a half degrees direction south as you can also see there are some blinking lights that you can only see in during the night one was right here and that's direction south uh maybe 14 degrees to southwest we don't know how far and um, I suppose the, well, the, the multiple blinking lights, as you can see. So those are potentially interesting objects that we might want to discover later on. But we won't go into that right now. So, so I'll put uh, I've put all those um, markers on the map, and now we might want to try to figure out how far away the aurora is. And for that, we will need two measurements. We can take one from here where we are. But this is not the best spot because the aurora is actually at an angle, so so it will be very hard um, to see what angle exactly we see the front of the aurora. Um, because, you know, well, well, I mean, the precision at which we are measuring those angles is probably not enough to, to make a very uh, good estimate. But, but hey, it's still going to be something. So, let's maybe get the Mm, the middle of that engine or the bottom engine so as you can see this is direction south east towards east plus maybe that's again 14 degrees we'll put that on our map as the line because we don't know how far away that is and then here um the front of the aurora is kind of tricky because we are seeing it at a rather uh steep angle so it's difficult to pinpoint a particular feature that we want to maybe look at so so i think that the first feature that stands out that will is also quite narrow that we can take as a reference point is this first broken rib which is directly here and that's direction east slightly weird to north east maybe that's maybe 16 degrees and um, we have all those lines now on our map and the next measurement we'll take from the life pod 3 or actually from the location where the life pod 3 is on the surface and we'll see how this all plays out on our map okay so I have arrived at life pod 3 and what I'm going to do right now is surface directly on top of that life pod and we'll take measurements or try to take measurements of um aurora basically we'll try to see how aurora and uh, the features of aurora that we want to look at look from this perspective as you can see it's it's not actually very far from our escape pod we can still see it but but the perspective has changed and um now when we look at that first um broken rib that we can still see on the aurora that's almost directly to east uh, with maybe slightly to the south maybe eight degrees as you remember one tick is seven and a half that's a little bit more than that so i would say that's eight degrees maybe maybe eight and a half 
but we don't actually know. We're not that precise. And the middle of the bottom engine is uh, southeast um, minus two, almost two ticks. That would be 14, 13 degrees, maybe. Something along those lines. As you can see, we are not extremely precise about that because, well, we don't have the um, means to be <laughs> that precise uh, without really overdoing things but I think this will be enough so now we can actually use this to plot the position of the aurora on our map and see how large it is so let's do that okay but you might be thinking this is all fun and games but we haven't discovered anything new so far we already knew where the beacons are and the aurora is the first thing that you actually see when you start the game so what's the point of using this method and here uh, I found a wreckage that I think I haven't dis haven't been exploring so far. I mean, I definitely haven't been inside and uh, maybe for some reason I, I don't want to go into that thing right now or maybe I don't have the necessary tools. Maybe I don't have the laser cutter or whatever that might be that, uh, that I would need to get, in, uh, to get inside. And I don't have any beacons that I can leave here so I can easily find this location later on. And here is where this method is actually pretty useful because all you need to do is find um, any two known beacons that you uh, have already marked on your map or know about or any new areas or spots, whatever, doesn't really matter. Something that you know and just look at um, the angles. And here uh, I have life pod free, obviously we're somewhere further out. Uh, that is... 439 meters away, we'll uh, use this distance to narrow down the angle measurement as you know because this, it's not very precise and we see that the angle at which we are seeing this um, life put free from our position where we are currently is southeast maybe maybe minus uh, 13 degrees so to be a little bit more precise about that I'll just leave the uh, seam off uh, move away from that biter as well and uh, let's let's repeat the measurement it's um southeast minus seven and a half and half of that so that would be around maybe 10 degrees and then you want to get another measurement from something that is relatively far away uh, you don't want the angle to be too narrow because obviously that will be uh, increasing your measurement error so life pod 19 looks okay. We'll take that as our reference point. Uh, life pod 19 is uh, 1,593 meters away, and we see it directly uh, south, minus 15 degrees to southwest. We draw that on our map, and we have the exact precise location of this this particular wreckage. And this way. What you can do in Subnautica, and I've been playing around with this quite a lot, you can actually do a lot of things because you not only can mark uh, all the interesting spots that you come across, you know, in your exploration without waiting for the store to develop. You can also uh, somewhat see what areas of the map you haven't explored very well. So you can narrow, <laughs> narrow your search to that areas that you haven't been to. And if you're really dedicated, what you could actually do is you could actually make a map of every biome because there is nothing stopping you from, you know, moving every hundred meters or so and um, uh, marking all those interesting looking places or marking the shoreline or whatever. Actually, if you if you really uh, if you're really dedicated cartographer, you could technically draw um, the old school way the entire map of Subnautica of the play playable uh, field here in Subnautica and um, an interesting thing as a <laughs> as a side observation that I've noticed is that here in Subnautica your view range is really limited as you can see this uh, escape pod where we start our game is only 800 meters away and we can't see it oh, well we, we still can't see it but really barely one, one kilometer away, we wouldn't be able to see it. And uh, what is interesting about this is that you should be able to see at least two islands from almost from anywhere, really, in the game. 
Well, you, you can see the aurora that is actually far away, as you know now. <laughs> but you can't see the islands. And um, we know that there are, there are islands here. Um, one is, well, almost two kilometers away. So we should be able to see it because it's actually a very... Uh, it has some, well, maybe not mountains, but relatively tall hills. And we see a cloud over there. And there's another island as a as a as a tip or hint i will tell you that there is an island over there that you can't see right now but it's a very interesting island and i've discovered that island using this method i was actually trying to explore my surroundings based on where i haven't been and i've noticed that there is a huge island right next to me that i should totally be able to see from my escape pod and i can't so I don't know if this is a conscious design choice for uh, Subnautica developers that they've actually limited your view so much um, to make you go out and explore. But I must say that with this method, it actually helps. Actually, it actually helps. It gives you an incentive to go out and explore in different directions, maybe to figure out where you are. Uh, as, I, as a side note, I, I know that you can technically probably download a mod that will add a map to Subnautica, but I think this way is just more rewarding and more fun, frankly. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed and maybe you even learned something new. And if you did, please consider liking this video. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I would also like to thank Joe Loffen, Look, Shrax and all my patrons on Patreon for their amazing support. My name is Mark Frim and I will see you next time.